Are you ready? Co-host Akira. Ready to shoot the video? <laughs> yes. Let's take the notebook. So today we're going to talk about the steps you need to take if you want to buy a property in Portugal. So everybody just uh, grab their coffee, tea or beverage of your choice. And let's get into this. He was also excited to know. Tell me, tell me. So this is nine steps to um, to take to buy your property in Portugal. Uh, yeah, you can do however many steps you want. Uh, I combined some steps, and uh, yeah, there are some some important things you need to think about before you start buying. So I made it. Uh, nine steps to buying your property in Portugal. At step eight, you bought the property already, but there's a ninth step. <laughs> I just make these things up as I go. <laughs> so let's see, I need to uh, sit a little bit over here uh, because I want to point things out like here. <laughs> Not on my map, but uh, in my uh, view. Well, you'll see. Like, because step one has nothing to do with buying the actual property. Uh, step one is knowing what you want. Knowing what you want is very important. And if you have a partner, spouse, it's important to know from each other what you want. So to see that you have your specifications in line before you start searching for a property. Me, myself, I did uh, four years to get, the, to get clear what I really wanted. Uh, this was when I knew uh, I was actually going to Portugal. So uh, with me, for instance, I needed to do a lot more research before I uh, visited my first property. Because at first I wanted to buy uh, just a plot of land and start building my own house. Later I found out that this is um, much more time consuming and also much more costly than, for instance, uh, renovating uh, an existing house. For instance, if you want to build a house, you need an architect to uh, draw up the plans and you need um, uh, an engineer to um, do all the pipe work for the services in the house. You need to have these papers drawn up before you can go and, uh, and ask for, uh, for a license to build the house. So that's going to cost you at least uh, four to six thousand euro for, um, for a cheap house. So knowing what you want is, uh, is very important. You need to know if you want to... Um, to have a lot of land, you, we need to know if you want to, uh, to take on a rebuild project or you want to have a house where you can just move in. Uh, all, all things you, uh, you need to consider. And of course also, uh, what is your budget? And if you're going to do a rebuild, you need to uh, have budget for the rebuild. So you have to plan accordingly. But after you get your wish list ready and you have found what are the possibilities for your budget, uh, you can start with step two. And step two is finding your property. And I already did quite an extensive video on uh, property search. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into this step uh, very much. Um, the link, uh, I put it here, I put the link above here somewhere. Um, it's still very, um, very up to date. And it gives you uh, an overview of the, the online websites where you can look for properties. Uh, of course, there are more than, than I mentioned in the video and I found out uh, a couple of more also. And of course, you can scout also for your own, uh, your own properties. But then you really need a translator to, uh, to get in touch with the Portuguese people. So uh, yeah, if you want to know more about property search, watch, um, watch the property search video. Let's see, what did I put up as number three? Well, this is the thing, you can put it where you want. Three would be getting your finances in order. So for if you found a property in, uh, in step two and you need to go into negotiation, you need to take into account that you need to uh, pay 10% uh, upfront. So as soon as you um, sign like the temporary buying agreement, you have to, um, to pay 10% of the property uh, value to, uh, to proceed. And this is to give them the buyer uh, and the seller, the, um, 
the insurance that uh, this transaction is really going to happen. Uh, what you also need to take into account is like the property uh, tax. And besides the tax cost, you also have the registration costs for the property. And um, this depends per property. Um, it's around a couple of hundred bucks. But it's um, for every uh, piece of property that you buy. So if you buy two articles, you pay this uh, two times. It's for every piece of property. And then you also have to deal with your notary costs and your uh, lawyer costs, of course, if you need a lawyer, uh, which is recommended. Then the next step, step four. Step four? Yes, step four. <laughs> you need to have all the paperwork from the property checked. The seller uh, supplies uh, the real estate agent, or if you buy directly, uh, needs to supply you uh, with the paperwork of the property. And from this paperwork, um, yeah, you need to best hire um, a lawyer. And this paperwork needs to be checked. Uh, for instance, uh, on uh, if the owner is really the owner of the property and how many owners may be involved when selling the property. Uh, like uh, inherited properties with multiple uh, family members. Uh, the property needs to be checked if there are any uh, debts on the property. Because in Portugal, uh, people can put a loan on a property. Um, in Holland, for instance, you can only put a loan on yourself. You ca I cannot put a loan on the house. Yeah, there is a mortgage for the house, but this is still... If I sell the house, I cannot sell the house with the mortgage. Um, but in Portugal, you can apparently have, uh, have uh, debts on this property. Um, and yeah, this needs to be sorted out. And before you buy it, you need to either notice or they need to clear the debts. And then step five would be um, to make sure that you can do uh, what you want to do with the property. Because if you buy like a piece of land and you want to build or you want to uh, rebuild the property, um, you need to know if uh, the things you want to do uh, with the property are possible uh, for uh, that region. So for the, um, if the council allows uh, you to do the things you want to do in that region. And if you can get the proper permissions from the council for the things you want to do. Yeah, so if you're not allowed with the property what you want to do with it, um, yeah, it's best that you maybe find some other property that, that does allow you to do uh, what you want to do. So yeah, this involves uh, checking paperwork by the, um, by the registration office. Uh, I'm not ex exactly sure if you need a, a full uh, solicitor for this. Um, maybe, um, I don't know what this is called in English. Uh, because you have also people that don't have the full degree of a lawyer. I don't know if there's an English term for this. Um, but they don't have a full lawyer degree, but they still can do like legal stuff for you. Uh, Coho Zoe joined me. You have a tag team? Akira is now gone, now Zoe is um, the managing director of the video. So yeah, make sure that you can do what you want to do with your property. Important step. Six. Six would be to get your financial number. Because when you buy a property in Portugal, um, you need to have a physical number to get the property uh, registered. And yeah, you need to apply for this physical number. Fiscal, fiscal, physical, physical, financial number. Um, you can do this yourself, but um, yeah, mostly um, in most places you will need somebody who speaks Portuguese. Uh, so to get guaranteed uh, success, you might want to take a translator. Having a translator is uh, a good idea when you don't speak a language in Portugal. Uh, so that's very easy to fix. Uh, 15 minutes, you uh, go in there and uh, you walk out with a NIF number. You need to bring the appropriate pa paperwork, of course, but it's a very easy step. Step 7 is uh, the appointment at the notary the appointment at the notary to transfer the property uh, in your name. And in Portugal, this can be uh, really happening. Uh, for my property, this was not, uh, not such a big family. It was a seller and his wife and his brother and his wife. Uh, because in Portugal, most uh, uh, all the people are married. So then both people need to show up at the notary to sign. Um, but uh, if you buy your property, it depends on uh, how many um, brothers 
are listed as uh, owners of the property. And in my case, it were um, two different parts of properties. Uh, it were actually two different properties that I bought at the same time, that one was owned by the um, one brother and the house was owned by another brother. Uh, but it can also happen with inheritance that, um, that there's uh, multiple people that need to sign for, uh, for the properties. I've heard of stories from uh, 20 people I needed to show up at the notary to, uh, to sign. A lawyer or at least somebody uh, who can translate is, uh, is good to assist you also when going to the notary. And uh, one thing to take in account is you have to pay the remaining 90% uh, of the price of the property uh, just before you uh, sign the actual documents. And yeah, if you have large amounts of money, you need to make sure uh, with your bank that you're like able to transfer these kind of large amounts. Uh, because for instance with my bank I needed to like up the amount to make it even possible to do the transaction in one time. So yeah, in my case I just took my laptop to the notary and I just transferred the money there like uh, instantly. Uh, with the former property however I transferred first uh, the money to the, um, to the lawyer and she took care of everything. So she made sure that at the right moment that we uh, we signed the agreement that the money was uh, was transferred. So yeah, and then uh, step nine, you are the proud owner of the property and you will receive some keys. Yes, and then it takes some time for the property to be actually registered on your name. And then you need to get the paper uh, to, to uh, have a paper that says that the property is uh, specifically in your name. Uh, but for uh, for this you have to uh, to wait a couple of uh, weeks. Uh, in Portugal you never know how how long things uh, can take. Um, but yeah, the property uh, should be in your name within uh, within like a couple of weeks. And if you want to revise paperwork, you can uh, you can do a request to um, to send you the updated paperwork. I do believe you have to pay for that now. And then you would say you're there, but. Um, I found the step number nine. <laughs> number nine is uh, you have to open a, a Portuguese uh, bank account um, because you will have uh, services and utilities for the house that will be uh, needed to be paid. Uh, perhaps you want to have internet and stuff and you need a Portuguese bank account to, um, to pay for these things. And like an online bank account is, uh, is not enough. You need like a real, uh, real Portuguese uh, bank account that has the, the Portuguese uh, multi-bank system uh, because all the utility uh, firms work with this multi-bank kind, of, uh, kind of system. Uh, to get a Portuguese bank account you also need to supply uh, the bank with, um, with information about uh, your income and stuff. I took the Montepio bank. It was for me the most easiest and uh, because I'm Dutch the cheapest uh, kind of bank. Now it's here that all the banks have like a monthly reoccurring fee. So uh, yeah, I was just looking at the services that they took and what kind of uh, fee they asked for. And for me, Montepio was like the, um, the best solution. Uh, I do took, took my translator there. So uh, they also didn't speak uh, much uh, English. No. So yeah, that should be the nine steps to buying your property in Portugal. So yeah. If you're not yet in the buying process and are still in the orientation phase of, um, of looking to buy uh, something in Portugal, um, the website will be online very soon, uh, probably this week. Uh, yes, I said that in the last episode. Uh, on the website you will find uh, a lot more information uh, about these points, uh, a little bit more in depth about uh, what, you, what all you have to take into account. And if you're still in the orientation phase, you can find a lot of useful uh, information on the website. Uh, if you are in the buying stage um, and you want uh, like somebody to assist you uh, with um, buying your property and finding all, out all these things about your dream property, um, somebody who helped me is Melanie from Homekey Portugal. And uh, she does a really good job uh, in uh, guiding you and uh, and helping you to uh, to acquire the property. 
But because Melanie is very good, she is also very busy. And like I said to you before, I would like to um, track who wants to get in touch with, uh, with Melanie. And I would kindly ask you that if you want to, um, if you want to buy a property from Homekey Portugal, or you, or you want assistance from uh, Melanie with buying your uh, your property, to send me an email. Uh, this is my email address. It's um, from the website already, uh, the Portugal Project. Info at theportugalproject.eu. And if you shoot me a message uh, with any initial questions you have. Uh, then I can already uh, maybe answer some of these initial questions for you and take some of the workload off of Melanie. And if you do uh, really want the buying assistance service, uh, because you already know what property you want to go and buy, uh, please also shoot me a message and then I could get you an appointment with Melanie on, uh, on short notice. So if you want to go to Portugal and you have any of these questions, just drop me an email and I so if you have any questions uh, for now um, about these points or uh, you want to buy an assistance service, shoot me a quick email and uh, we'll, get you, uh, we'll get you on the way. Yes, yeah, Zoe, I think the video is finished, right? You think it was good? No retakes? Zoe says it's fine, so I'll see you in the edit. <laughs> um, hope this video was useful to you. Uh, I tried to do my best in, uh, in providing some good information for you guys. And there will be more, uh, more of these kind of videos also coming in providing uh, people who want to come to Portugal with, uh, with the right information. And right connections. It's also important. So, um, yeah. See you next time. I got to use part of my studio setup, actually, for a video. It wasn't completely useful. Maybe I'll do another video here. Or two. Just to use it. Howdy. Thank you for watching another video of the Portugal Project. If you want to follow the Portugal Project more closely, you can also add it on Facebook. Or add me on my personal account on Facebook or Instagram. See you next time at the Portugal Project.